Hello, welcome to Drupal Fever. Today we will go over the steps to install, configure and use PuTTY. Before we continue, I just wanted to clarify that this is not going to be an exhaustive tutorial about PuTTY. This is going to be instead a practical guide. For those of you that are not fully clear as to what PuTTY is and what it does, here goes a quick intro. Let's begin by talking about the need for PuTTY. If you are a Drupal developer, odds are you will have your website hosted in a Linux server. In that case, you will have a chance to install and use Drush there. If you are a Drupal developer and don't know what Drush is, shame on you. Click on the link below to watch my tutorial about Drush. Drush is great, but it comes with a caveat. You will need to be on a Linux or Mac OS environment to be able to remotely connect to your web server and run Drush. So, if you are on Windows, you are out of luck, right? Not so fast. That's where PuTTY comes to the rescue. With PuTTY, you can run a Linux-like terminal window through which you can access your web server via a secure SSL connection. After logging in on your Linux web server, you can do all sorts of Linuxy things. Among these things, you can install and run Drush on your web server. In short, PuTTY allows Windows users to connect to a remote Linux server as if they were in a Linux environment. This tutorial will be subdivided into three parts. In a minute, we will go over the first step, which will show what it takes to install and configure PuTTY. The second step will be how to configure PuTTY with SSL so you will be able to securely connect to a remote Linux server without the need to type a password. Finally, in the last part, we will go over how to upload and download files using only PuTTY. So, let's go! You begin by opening your browser and typing PuTTY.org and pressing Enter. Now you click on the Download PuTTY Here link. Now you go down and click on the PuTTY Installer for Windows. The download should be pretty quick, small file. Now you open the file, run, yes, next, 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 install. Now uncheck view readme file and click on the finish button. Now you can close this window and the browser and you can run PuTTY by going to all programs and the PuTTY folder, you can click on PuTTY. Now I'm going to create an example profile here on PuTTY, but the web hosting account that I'm going to access with PuTTY needs to have SSH enabled. Most web hosting accounts don't have SSH enabled by default. You need to contact your web hosting provider to make sure that SSH is enabled on your web hosting account before you can try PuTTY. When creating a new profile in PuTTY, you have to do a couple of configuration settings. First, you need to go to the menu and click on Window and then Translate. On this profile, I will be connecting to a remote Linux server. So the UTF-8 option should be selected here. This next configuration is not required, but it's highly recommended. I'm going to change the NC blue color because the default color is very hard to read on a black terminal. 
I'm going to make the ANSI blue a little lighter. We need to type 113-113-255. Now select connection on the menu and click on data. Here you will type your SSH username. Most of the time it will be the same as your FTP username. Now you click back on session and type the name of your profile. Here you can either type your IP address or the host name. The default SSH port is 22. You should only change this configuration if your web hosting provider tells you so. Now you can click on the save button. Now the next time you open PuTTY, you will see your profile name there and you can open it in two ways. First, you can select your profile name, click on the load button and click on the open button and that will start the connection. Or you can simply double click the name of your profile and put it will automatically load your profile and then open the connection. Here, since this computer is connecting to the server for the first time, PuTTY is giving you a security alert. Nothing to worry about, just say yes. Now, on the password prompt, you should type your SSH password, which should be the same password that you use to connect to your server via FTP. Now you press enter. That's it, you are logged in. To close this window, you can either click on the close button or type exit and press enter. There you go. You have put it installed and configured on Windows. Please subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. This is Elias Barbosa. Thanks for watching.